Ephesians chapter number 1. We'll begin reading verse number 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption, through his blood the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing, Lord, how our hearts were blessed. God, thank you for the good testimonies as our hearts were double blessed. God, you're a good God. Lord, but God, we would all turn out different. But we're thankful, Lord, how you uh, interrupted our lives when you came to where we were and showed us our need of a Savior. And God saved us. Some of us, you saved in spite of us. Uh, and Father, we bless you and we praise you. And God, we're thankful that you haven't ever left us. And God, you don't leave us alone. And God, you comfort us even when we're in the fire and even when we're faced with adversity. God, you come to us and Lord, you help us through whatever we're facing. And God, we bless you. Now, Father, I pray you to help your people now. Lord, uh, there's not a whole lot of good news in this world right now. And God, your people need some encouragement, and I pray you do that tonight. Use this unworthy vessel, and God, get glory to your name, and we'll thank you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things in these verses we read. It's talking about saved folks, and if you're saved, you can find some encouragement in these words. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the believer's allotment. Uh, Look with me in verse number 3. The Bible said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, here's our allotment, blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Look at that word, in. You ought to circle that. In heavenly places, uh, uh, circled again, in Christ. Uh, uh, my dear friends, you and I have an allotment tonight that this world doesn't know anything about. Uh, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly places uh, in Christ. Uh, uh, do you realize what the Bible is saying? That the only thing that is keeping us from heaven is this flesh. Uh, God looks at our citizenship already being there. Our conversation is recorded there. Uh, and God looks at us as if we are already there. Uh, we are being blessed with heavenly things uh, even though we live in an earthly environment. Uh, I'm glad we've got a father who looks at us not as we are. You talk about rose-colored glasses. You've seen mamas and daddies hollering for Johnny who can't dribble ball and think that he's the greatest thing to ever happen to ball. And you, you've seen uh, 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 little Susie up on a stage uh, picking her nose and mama thinks she's the greatest actress that ever uh, made the stage. They're looking through rows. Hey, I want to tell you something. Uh, we were lost. We were wicked. We were on our way to hell. Uh, and God came to where we was. Uh, he saved us, robed us in his righteousness. Uh, he don't see us as filthy. He he don't see us as vile. He don't see us as failures and losers. He don't see us as we are. Even when we're picking our nose on the stage, God says, that's my child. Hallelujah. And what an allotment we have. Uh, can I say, secondly, notice the believer's adoption. Look at verse number four. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to what the Word of God says you know, for nearly 600 years, there's been a doctrine called Calvinism. And Calvin was a Presbyterian. And Calvin's doctrine has filtered into Baptist churches. And people believe what Calvin said. I'm going to believe what the Bible says. And they take terms and they apply modern day definitions to what the Bible says instead of saying what the Bible says about what the Bible says. Notice our adoption. Verse number four. According, our allotment is according. 
And God looks at us through those rose-colored glasses uh, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus according as he hath chosen us and there's that word that needs to be circled again in him. Who? Christ Jesus. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself uh, according to the good pleasure of his will. What the Bible is not saying is that God chose us before the foundation of the world uh, and that God predestinated us before the foundation of the world to be uh, in heaven one day. That's not what it's saying. What it is saying is that before the foundation of the world, God chose us in Christ Jesus. And before the foundation of the world, God predestinated us in Christ Jesus, the adoption in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? God chose Jesus as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world and that if we were ever to be seated in heavenly places, what was predestinated, what was chosen, is that Jesus would die that Jesus would be buried that he'd be raised again and that you and I if we were to ever make it to heaven we'd have to go through him my dear friends uh, he didn't predestinate anybody to, be to go to heaven or anybody to die and go to hell he made a chance where everybody could be saved but the only way we could be saved was chosen before this thing ever got started it was to be chosen through Christ Jesus it's always been through the blood of the Lamb. We see our adoption. Brother Brian, you were, you were born to the Hensleys, but you were born again to Jesus. You've been adopted into the family of God. And what a blessing to be adopted. I've known people that didn't know their father, but they met the Heavenly Father. What a blessing, huh? They, they may not have had much of an earthly father, uh, but oh, what a blessing to have the heavenly father. Uh, I've known folks that came from the wrong side of the tracks, uh, didn't have much in this world, uh, but they met the father, uh, and now they own it all. Uh, it doesn't matter about your beginning. Uh, it matters about your ending. Uh, and have you been adopted into the family of God? Uh, what a blessing to be saved tonight. Mm. You know, some of us, we all got that one in the family we wish it wasn't in the family. Do you realize the angels look at God and say, why are they going to be in the family? When the angels aren't in the family? We're all that person in the family of God, but it don't matter where he's in. We see the allotment of the believer. We see the adoption of the believer. I could spend more time on that predestination, but I want to get to my thought. Notice the acceptance of the believer. Brother Doug alluded to this in his testimony. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Do you realize in Christ Jesus you're in? You're in. You're accepted. You know what the world wants? Acceptance. It don't matter if it's Black Lives Matter it don't matter if it's any other lives matter. It don't matter uh, 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 what uh, uh, state, any, uh, you, any place you go to in the world. Everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to count. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be a, a, a part of something. Uh, but do you realize we who deserve nothing but hell, uh, we've been accepted into the beloved, uh, my dear friends, because we who once were outside have been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we are in we are accepted uh, uh, when we walk to those doors you're in the family of God uh, you don't need to lower your head uh, you are of a royal priesthood uh, you are of a chosen generation uh, I know outside these walls the world beats up on you I know outside these walls you're non-essential and deplorable I know your flesh beats up on you I know the devil tells you how sorry you are uh, but all you got to do is run over here to verse 6 uh, and say I'm in I'm in I'm in when you come to the house of God you're amongst God's people you're one of them you're in and we can say hallelujah I'm one of that crowd I'm glad I'm in I don't deserve to be in 
I don't know why he wanted me in, but I'm in. And I'm glad to be accepted in the beloved. Now notice it didn't say accepted in the brethren. There's, there's some crowds out there I don't fit. There's some Baptist crowds out there I don't fit with. Uh, I believe the whole counts of the book. I believe we're to restore people, and I believe we're to love people, and I believe we're to be good to people, and especially God's people. And I still believe the book that if anybody offers a cool drop, a cup of water in God's name, he's got a prophet's reward. I don't believe this crowd that believes only certain people can do something for God. I believe anybody blood washed can do something for God because they're accepted in the beloved. I'd much rather be accepted by him than the brethren anyway. Do you know how many preachers I've told them I'm glad I live in Kentucky, not the Carolinas? I don't have to put up with what they had to put up with. I said, because I'd punch people in the face. Uh, I said, there are a bunch of knuckleheads down there trying to tell you who can do something, who can't do something, what they can do for God. I'm just glad I'm in a place where we can just do something for God. Uh, I'm glad I'm in, in the beloved. Uh, but then notice our atonement, verse 7. Verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through baptism. Is that what it says? Through our works. Is that what it says? No, through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Notice that's plural. You know when he forgave you, he forgave you of all your sin. Past, present, and future. Hmm? Can I help you with something? If he couldn't forgive you of all your sins, then you're not saved. Huh? Because it only takes one sin to keep you out of heaven. And by the way, that's the sin of unbelief. If he couldn't forgive you of all of them, you're not forgiven of any of them. Because huh? one, one little piece of leaven leavens the whole lump. But he forgave you of all your sins. All of them, they're gone. Huh? Now, man won't forgive you. Man wants to bring it up. Huh? But I'm glad the Savior never bring it up. Uh, he's forgiven you of your sins according to the riches of his grace. Why did God forgive us? I have no idea. I'm glad he gave me what I didn't deserve, grace. Uh, and the Bible says the riches of his grace. Now, Miss Nett and I was talking the other night. We was watching the convention and she looked up how much Donald Trump was worth. I told her what I thought it was, and it was even more than that. Uh, and, and, and it baffles me that he wants to put up with what he has to put up with every day with, with what he's worth. Uh, but can I help you with something? In our terms, we'd say he's rich. He has need of nothing. He has plenty and excess on top of plenty. But can I say our Lord Jesus owns it all? And when it talks about his riches, it don't talk about his gold. It don't talk about his silver. It talks about those things that apply to us. The riches of his grace. He'll never run out of grace. He has a vast supply. And no matter how much grace you need, he's got it. He can afford it. Uh, 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 he doesn't have to worry about uh, whether it be grace tomorrow. He's got plenty of grace for you and I. Uh, well, we ought to be excited about our atonement. But then I notice the abridgment of salvation for the believer. Look down at verse 13. This shows us what it took to be saved. The Bible says this in verse 13. In whom, talking about Jesus, ye also trusted. If you're saved, you had to trust in Jesus. In whom, all, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. Nobody gets saved unless they heard the Bible, heard the gospel, heard that they're lost, heard they need a Savior. You trusted in Jesus after you heard. And then it says, the gospel of your salvation. Aren't you glad for the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ. That he died according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose according to the scriptures. Uh, the good news, he paid your sin debt. Uh, and he's willing to save. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, 
we see the, uh, the abridgment. We see that uh, you trusted after you heard the gospel. In whom also after that you believed. Uh, 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 it's one thing to trust. It's another thing to believe. Hmm? And trust means that uh, 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 you know that it happened. But believe makes it personal. Hmm? You personally believed on the Lord and acted on that trust. Uh, and then, uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, uh, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What a blessing. I'm glad that he sealed me because I'm, I'm starting to forget. I don't remember like I once did. Now, I remember the day I got saved. But there's a lot of things in between that day and now I don't remember that well. But you know who has got it recorded and who's got it all taken care of? Him. Amen. See, my salvation's not contingent on me. It's contingent on Him. And me put my faith in Him. And when I did, He sealed me and nothing will ever change that. I like what First John says, uh, 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 that when He seals us, that we're pure. The inward man sinneth not. Now, we got a problem with His outer man. Uh, and you will till the day of Jesus Christ, till we become that perfect man. But that inward man, he's as fresh as the day he got saved. How does that happen? Only God can do that. Uh, he sealed us. Uh, and then he says in verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That word earnest means the beginning or just the first installment. Now think about that. He said, Everything that I've said to this point is just the beginning. I ought to preach with God's help on. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. He said, this is the earnest of our inheritance. Do you realize our allotment being seated in heavenly places? Uh, that's just the beginning. Uh, do you realize that our adoption into the family of God, that was just the beginning. Uh, do you realize that our acceptance in the beloved, uh, that's just the beginning. Uh, do you realize our atonement and our sins being washed away, that was just the beginning. Uh, do you realize all the abridgment that it took us to get to Calvary and to get saved, to get sealed by the Spirit? That was just the beginning. We're just getting started, friend. Uh, hey, neighbor, uh, it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder. Uh, Brother Aaron and Miss uh, uh, Michelle just bought a new house. Uh, they had to put some, uh, some earnest money up front when they signed the contract. Uh, uh, you know what that said? Uh, that said for the next 30 years, uh, there's going to be plenty more to come. Uh, but one of these days, it'll be theirs. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, when he gave us uh, uh, the salvation, that we enjoy when he washed us uh, when he sealed us uh, that's just saying there's a whole lot more to come uh, it's just the beginning uh, we're just getting started uh, say preacher I've been saved 40 years uh, you're just getting started uh, we're going to everlasting life my dear friends uh, I got to think about we're just getting started can I say first of all just wait until the redemption of the body you realize when you got saved, only your soul got saved. But there's coming a day, hallelujah, when the rest of it gets saved. Huh? Hey, uh, when the trumpet sounds, uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, this corruptible shall put on incorruption. Uh, this mortal shall put on immortality. Uh, I'll get a body fashioned like the Son of God. Uh, I'll get a body that doesn't get tired. Uh, I'll get a body that doesn't get sick. Uh, I'll get a body just like His. My dear friend, we're just getting started. Those of you that have health problems, just hang around. We're just getting started. You're never going to have any more. Uh, no more back problems. No more neck problems. No more uh, feet problems. No more hand problems. No more eye problems. No more breathing problems. No more problems. Uh, hallelujah. You get to go to heaven and eat all the Swiss rolls you want. And it don't matter. I say glory. We're just getting started. Uh, Miss Sheila, all that health stuff you making him eat get to heaven everything's healthy hallelujah glory uh, can you imagine sanctified sugar in heaven it's going to be good uh, I'm telling you we're just getting started friend hey look up perk your ears up 
This thing ain't going down. We're going up. Do you realize? It's going to get gooder and gooder. Uh, we're just getting started. Not only just wait until the redemption of the body, wait until the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wait till you get to see him as he is. Now we look through a glass darkly. Now we read the Bible and we, we draw uh, 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 images in our mind as to what we think he may look like. Hair white as wool, eyes as flames of fire, countenance as brass, a uh, 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 voice of many waters. Uh, uh, we get to thinking about what's he going to look like? Uh, what's he going to look like? Uh, can you imagine uh, uh, when the servant went and got Isaac's bride and he told her all about Isaac uh, and they're on that camel uh, and, and that caravan going across the desert uh, and she's getting weary along the ways knowing she's left everything she's known behind, uh, left her family uh, only for the promise uh, of a bridegroom. Uh, and I can see the servant riding back to her and telling her, oh, you're not going to believe how beautiful he is, how wonderful he is, uh, all that he is. Uh, and then she began to think, well, will he like me? Uh, uh, but can I help you with something? When that caravan came over that last dune uh, and Isaac saw the caravan, uh, he went running to meet her. Uh, uh, she lighted off the camel uh, and fixed her eyes on him said that's him that's him that's him hey he loved her and she loved him I've got news for you the servant of the Holy Ghost came and found me and it's been a long journey a lot of ups and downs oh and I've gotten word what he looks like but I'm wondering is it so is it so and will he really be pleased with me a neighbor we've just got the earnest of it hey when he shall appear uh, and we seem as he is, uh, we'll be pleased, uh, and so will he. Hallelujah. Huh? Hey, we're just getting started. We're going to see him as he is. I'm not going to see Peter at the gate. Uh, I'm not waiting for an angel to come and get me. I'm looking for him, the one that's altogether lovely, and his name is Jesus. Just wait until the redemption of the body, the revelation of Christ. Just wait for the readying of the bride. We just had a wedding here a few weeks ago. Well, I'm glad that stress is over. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I can't wait to yours, darling. Put me in a nursing home now. Huh? But all the anticipation... And all that Miss Tay went through, getting all spruced up. She had to get nails done, had to get hair done, had to get makeup done, had to get the dress on, had to go through all this garb. All the guys do is sleep till about noon, get up, put your tuxes on. That's it. Brush their teeth. That's all there was, huh? No, she wanted, she wanted to make certain she was beautiful for her bridegroom. And if you was here, I don't know if you was looking, you was probably looking at her. As soon as he looked at her, he busted out in tears. He lost it. Uh, now listen, the Bible says over there in Revelation 19 that the bride hath made herself ready. Uh, now listen, he's coming back for a bride without spot, without wrinkle. Now I want to tell you something. In this flesh, we're not without spot, without wrinkle. And during the tribulation that's going on in earth, there's going to be the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to have to give account of the deeds done in this body, whether good or evil. And see, that's when he's going to wrinkle out all the blemishes, and all the problems. And then he's going to give us the wedding garment. The Bible says it's fine twine and linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. My dear friends, this is a garment like none you've ever seen. And when we don that thing, and we come into the wedding of the Lamb. Listen to me. That garment is going to reflect His beauty and His holiness and His glory. Hey, listen. You ain't never seen anything till the readying of the bride. There's coming a day, friend. Well, oh, there's coming a day. Hey, you haven't seen nothing yet. Uh, we're just getting started. Now I got to think about this. The Bible says... Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hmm? We get to sit down and dine with Him. Now, I don't know. All I know, Brother Donald, 
is ancient Jewish custom said that the bridegroom would serve the bride. And all I know is that before he went to Calvary, he got down and he washed his disciples' feet. Now listen to me. I don't know what that does to you, but to think that the darling son of glory, the king of kings, who put on flesh, got down and washed the feet of those disciples that he knew that every one of them was going to run from him when he was hanging on the cross. Can I help you with something? If all that Jewish history is true, there's coming a day when he's going to serve us. At the We ought to be down serving him. Are you listening? But he's going to serve us. And he's going to say, and I don't know what the marriage supper is going to have, but it's going to be good. Because Baptists like to eat. It's going to be good. Huh? Brother Ray, wouldn't it be wonderful if he gives you heaven's recipe of your favorite thing? He knows all about you. Whatever your favorite meal is, isn't it wonderful if he comes and serves you and says, Here, Ray Roberts, take and eat. Huh? Clint, you probably like squirrel or something. Here is glorified squirrel. Uh, hmm, uh. Brother Brian, he says, Kelly's fish camp, nothing. Try this. Huh? Uh, doesn't told you what he's going to serve me. It's a bowl of sugar. You think I'm kidding. You ask my wife. I'll pour me a bowl of cereal that's sugared cereal, and I'll dump sugar on top of it. Glory. Can't help it. You're sour. I'm sweet. Can't help it. <laughs> Brother Doug gave me some, I got to tell this. He gave me some protein shakes for Sid, so I tried one. He asked me, he said, How were they? They were vanilla. He said, How were they? I said, It was good. It was real good when I put that Hershey syrup inside it. <laughs> he said, You're defeating the purpose, preacher. I said, It's good. Put about a half a cup full of Hershey syrup in it, man. It's good stuff. <laughs> Everything's better with Hershey syrup on it. <laughs> try, try spare ribs with Hershey syrup on it. It'd be good. Uh, I'm telling you, we're just getting started. Think about it. Just wait until we get to reign with Christ. You realize He's coming back and going to rule and reign. And we're coming back with Him on white horses. And you who the world says you was deplorable. You who political officials say were non-essential. You're going to be ruling and reigning over them. You do know that, don't you? Uh, uh, look at me, Mr. Essential. <laughs> we will rule and reign with Christ. Uh, we will carry out what he says to do. What a privilege. Now here's where it gets real tricky. We don't like talking like this. See, where much is given, much is required. And what God has blessed you with and allowed you to experience from the Scriptures and allow you to hear and allow you to be a part of, you are required of that. And when you're faithful in the least, God blesses you and will exalt you to be faithful among much. And it's very important to see. How you conduct yourself and live in this life will determine what you rule and reign over in the next life. You wait and see how many of these big-time Baptist preachers end up being rulers over dog catchers. And these little grandmas and grandpas that nobody ever gave time for that get up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and call on God and ask God to save and ask God to bless the church and ask God to do. And they gave their two, their two mites and they did all they could do. You wait and see what God blesses them and exalts them to rule and reign over. My dear friends, it does matter how you live in this life. It does matter. I thought about this. Just wait until the recompensing of the devil. In John 20, when we get to see him bound and cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. I don't know about you, but I'll say happy day, happy day when we see the devil get his due. Uh, if you've never heard that message, go back and let Randy get you a copy of it. I'll take that devil. For every lie ever told, for every home he ever hurt, for every murder he ever caused to be committed, for every child that was ever abducted and abused, for every sin that was ever committed, he himself will be sentenced and cast into the lake of fire. I say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
And I thought about this lastly. We're just getting started. Just wait into the reality of New Jerusalem. Just wait until we see that city that John got a glimpse of. The foundations are 18 miles high. And it's all diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, special, you know, precious gems. The streets are purest gold. The mansions are crystal clear. There's a crystal river. The throne of God is in the midst of it, and there are lightnings and rainbows coming out of his throne. And they say the most beautiful sight in heaven is Jesus on his throne. When that becomes reality, when we hear the ransom throng cry holy, holy, holy unto him and begin to worship him, you'll be a part of that. Just wait till the reality of new Jerusalem when God himself shall wipe away every tear from our eyes where there be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, no more anything that we ever face as hardship in this life. When it all becomes reality, We'll look back on this Ephesians 1 and say, Hallelujah for the earnest, but praise God for the end result. My dear friends, we're just getting started. I know when you watch the news and you see them burning down cities, you see fascism, terrorism going on in our streets. And you don't have to look to those cities when you look over and see people being shot in Cincinnati and drug deals gone bad and you see all the problems and all the pain and all the peril. When you hear, and thanks be unto God, it should have been the number one story all weekend of them rescuing 39 children down there in Atlanta from uh, 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 those sex traffickers and you see those kind of things happen. I heard another 25 in Ohio was rescued. That ought to be hallelujah that uh, there's some good news. But no, they're too busy bashing Trump telling you you look all around and then you go and you, you go to try and go into Kroger's and they look at you like you're criminal because you don't have a mask on and you, you go down the street and you know people look at you like you're weird because you're going to church and it just seems like everything that you face just brings uh, anguish on you Friends, don't lose sight of the fact this thing's almost over and we're just getting started can I give you some good news? Won't be any mask in heaven. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Uh, just go to the CDC website and just listen to Fauci. He'll tell you the masks don't work. But yet they've been grafted that in people's minds because they're trying to control them. And they're doing a good job of it. Uh, the Bible says the last days, those that be good we call evil and those that are evil be called good. Isn't it amazing how if you just stand up for the Bible, people look at you in disdain? I'm glad that we're just getting started. What are they going to do when they got to look at us sitting next to Jesus? They'll think, boy, I wish I'd have listened to them. You do realize at the great white throne judgment, we'll be in the jury. You do realize that, don't you? We'll be the witnesses of their fate because they thought we were second class. My dear friends, this thing's winding down. All that we've already gained, that's just the beginning. We're just getting started. The best is yet to come. So tonight, maybe you need to get in the altar and thank God for the beginning, but that there's more to come. Huh? Hey, I like eating a good meal, but I love a good dessert. Maybe tonight you just need to come and, and just thank him for caring about you. Maybe tonight you need to go to somebody, put your arms around and say, I just want to tell you, you've been a blessing. Maybe tonight you just need to thank God for being so good to you. I don't know. But I do know this. It's not time to put your head down and get all depressed. This thing, we're just getting started. This thing's going to get gooder and gooder. Let's all stand tonight. Miss Brittany, come pick something out on the piano. Whatever you're playing, be fine. My folks are coming, folks going to one another, whatever God told you to do, you do it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We're glad this thing's just getting started, God. God, we're glad. We've got a home in glory waiting on us. And God, we're glad for what you've blessed us to already experience. And we're looking forward to the days to come. And help your people tonight. Edify them, lift them up. And God, do a work in our hearts that we can go out and pour out in this world the goodness of God, we can see folks come to Christ.
Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Bless now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.